Hey everyone, Joe here with Guild Vault Games, and I figured I'd make a little video talking about the announcement of play boosters for Magic the Gathering. Uh, you're gonna walk with me while I open this door. <coughs> so if you missed it, um, starting with Murders of Markovs. Let me see, I wrote some notes. Murders of Kevlov Manor, which is gonna be Q1 2024, I'm pretty sure. They're doing away with draft boosters and set boosters. They're combining the two ideas into something they're calling play boosters. So, they, uh, yeah, let's see, get this open. We're making some progress, I'll show you real quick. We're making some progress if you've seen any of the other videos on some of our, look at all this. That's all just bulk. We're making some progress in here, but that's not the point of the video. Anyways, uh, so they decided to combine it all into one product. So they said, uh, I'll link the video or I'll link the announcement in the description. But some of the things they cited was set boosters, eclipse draft boosters, which if you're playing this, the game and you actually want a lot of products, you typically people go for set boosters just because you got a chance for one to three rares up to, I think you can get up to four and then a list card. It's more value for a dollar, dollar fifty more per pack. So that makes a lot of sense. You usually weren't buying draft boosters. You might be getting them as prize support from events or just use them as draft. Uh, they said inventory issues. So when all the stores like myself stopped buying so many draft boosters because people weren't interested in draft boosters, now all of a sudden they have an excess of draft boosters which makes a lot of sense. Um, as a store, it's still frustrating because you still have to buy draft boosters to give out as prize support and if you actually want to run drafts. So, I get that. Uh, draft booster abandonment is what they called it. Um, which makes sense. Like, nobody was interested. We had a, we have some people that, that want to get the set. They want to open a box and they're trying to find the cheapest price point to do it. And draft made sense. You don't get as many hits, but you still get, if you're trying to build a set, you want commons on commons. It's a good way to start. But for your dollar, set boosters have been the way it's been. Uh, confusion in the marketplace. Now say as a store, you know, when when it's usually only an issue with like new people that, that join the hobby, um, <clears throat> explain the difference between draft and set and collector and jumpstart. It can get a little confusing. People usually figure it out. It's not very complicated, but it isn't the most intuitive. Um, draft less desirable. I think that's pretty obvious why that's the case. Um, I don't know in your market, but here locally, drafts themselves are pretty hit or miss. Uh, people don't feel like the value's there. You get one rare pack, so you draft. Even if you don't do super well, you might walk away with three four rares and if they're not something you're looking for then it's not really worth it to you so <clears throat> what their plan is is to combine it all so what they're going to do is these new play packs are going to have 14 cards in it not 15 14 and you can still get a chance at one to four rares they don't have a, a set number and a list slot so they're going to combine the art card the token slot, and the list slot, all in one. So when you open a pack, you'll get one of those three. The issue is that the boxes are now, set boosters come with 30 packs, draft boosters come with 36. These play packs are going to be 36 packs. And they're pricing it close to set booster packs. So what that means is the play boxes are going to be probably 20, 25 bucks more. It's hard to say. I don't know if people are really interested in if the extra packs off weigh the, the price you're going to have to pay. The biggest thing is uh, unknown for me. Does that make draft more exciting? The fact you're going to open at least, I don't know, six rares, seven, eight rares, but your drafts are going to be more. I can imagine drafts going at minimum up five more dollars per draft event. I don't know, draft isn't super consistent for us, but it might be where you're at. 
So I'd love to hear from people what they think about it. If they think that's uh, enough enticement to come out and draft, it's going to be hard to say. Um, and let's see, I've got the article pulled up as well. Let's take a look at some of the things they were trying to accomplish. With set boosters, the biggest thing is you can't really use them in limited. One, there's only 12 cards. And two, the colors weren't really balanced. So they say they had to redesign how to balance the colors. So they named some of the bigger differences between the two. You get the potential of open four rares or mythic cards. You get one less playable card, so you get 14 instead of 15. You're gonna get three less uncommons. Post editing Joe here. Real quick, I made a bit of an error. Uh, it's three less commons per pack, not uncommons. You're still gonna get your three, un three uncommons per pack. It's just three less commons. I just wanted to clear that. Okay, bye. You get plus one non-foil wild card, plus one traditional foil wild card, a one in eight opportunity of getting a list card, roughly one in three opportunities at an art card, which I don't really know how many people are collecting art cards. They don't appeal to me personally, and I don't really sell many here. But it's interesting, to say the least. I don't know. I, I think it's a good idea. As a store itself, it's easier for me to be able to buy just collector boosters and play boosters and be done with it instead of having to stock a third one and then try and balance how many of draft do I need, how many set do I need, all that kind of jazz. But with the prices going up, I don't know if that's going to, if the set boosters are still going to sell as well as they had before. It'll be interesting. I like that they're changing stuff and it's a pretty good article. It's one thing they mentioned was uh, expected value, um, which is kind of weird because wizard claims they don't care about expected value. That's why they don't necessarily stress about reprints quite as much, but I think it's the first time I've seen them actually admit that they check the secondhand market or the expected value market. I don't know. Let me know what you think. If you hadn't heard about it before, that's news to you. I will link the entire article so you can read everything they said about it. If I missed anything, let me know. But as a store, I'm kind of happy. I don't think it fixes the draft necessarily. So. Let me know what you think. Uh, thank you for watching. Have a great day.